All right, so with a real quick in introduction, guys, for any of you guys who aren't students of mine already, I know I have some in here, but I see some new names as well. Um, anybody who doesn't know me, my name's Corey Smith. I am a professional foreign currency trader, um, head coach here at CoreFX. We've got Savan in here as well. Savan is one of our analysts here. Actually, Savan's not in right now. He was in a minute ago. He's one of our analysts here as well who shares the trades in the signal room, but I am the founder of CoreFX, created the course. Um, I trade professionally for a prop trading firm. I have traded professionally before with multiple different firms. I've been an analyst for T3 Trading, one of the biggest trading groups in the U.S. Um, I've been a contributor on investing.com and a bunch of different things as far as uh, analysis goes and all. But currently, I, I trade an investment fund. Uh, I trade a Forex account as part of a sub account to a management fund. Um, basically, I'm a proprietary trader for a hedge fund, I guess you could say. Not necessarily a hedge fund, but an asset management firm. Um, so I've been trading for almost seven years now. I went to college for international business. I've got a lot of background on the fundamental side of trading through school. And now I've got the technical um, analysis combined with fundamental analysis and all to make my trading um, well-rounded. But I've been doing this all for almost seven years professionally for three and a half years. Um, so that's a little bit of background about myself. Now, diving in here to the trading plan. Application window, here we go, share screen. Hopefully you guys can see my screen now. You guys should be able to see my screen, and when I flip it over, um, you guys should be able to see the screen changing, it looks like it is. Let me know if anybody's not seeing that or having problems with that. Um, but basically what we wanna cover right now is what is a trading plan, why is it important? Right, so I'm gonna be referring to the course my course that I've created um, for trading and the trading plan development. So this just shows here the videos we have, how many there are on downloadable content. But um, trading plan is essentially going to be um, everything that encompasses what you do as a trader, right? So this is going to be everything from what pairs you're trading, what sessions you're trading, what times of the day you're trading according to the sessions what style you're trading, how you're managing your trades, how you're looking for your trades, um, how you're analyzing your journal, how you're going back to reflect on your trades, everything, everything is gonna be in your trading plan. So think of your trading plan as a business plan, right? When a company creates a business plan, they have everything from a mission statement to their values um, and their concept all the way down to you know their finances and exactly what they can expect to be making on income versus expenses, a layout of your balance sheet, all this, right? Your trading plan has target markets, it has marketing dollars, it has everything in it, right? Everything to make a successful business is within your business plan. Think of that as your trading plan, right? So your trading plan is going to be everything that encompasses your trading on a piece of paper. And there's a number of reasons that this helps um, that we'll go over in a second, but the more detailed you can be with it, the better. It should be like the longest research paper you've ever had to do. Right? You should be researching yourself. You should be resurfing what works for you, your schedule, your markets, your pairs you like to trade, styles you like to trade. Maybe you follow some people. Maybe you have some mentors that you have stuff from them that you want to incorporate. But you want to involve as much as you can into it. The more in your trading plan, the better. And then over time, you can trim it down to, you know, trim the fat off of it and get down to the core of what's important with it. Right? So your trading plan, ultimately, what you want it to be is your entire outline of everything that you want to be included in your trading. So um, I have the entire outline here that we'll go over in a moment about you know, laying all of this out. Um, but why is this important? It's, it's like the comparison I just used with um, having a business, right? If, if you look at statistics for small businesses specifically, there's something like 80, 90% of small businesses fail within the first year or two. And um, you know, all kinds of studies have been done on this. And the number one reason why most businesses fail, small businesses, is lack of planning, especially within the first year or two. They did not have a plan in place and it wasn't detailed enough. They didn't have a plan to know this is their expenses and for X amount of time, you're gonna need to have enough money to cover those expenses as you're trying to get more income coming in, right? And this plan just isn't there. It's, people don't plan enough. And it is 100% directly 
correlated to trading, right? 95% of traders fail is, I believe, the most accurate study I've seen uh, with percentage of failure in traders. And from the thousands of traders I've worked with all over the world, I can 1 million percent say um, for sure that trading plan is the number one reason traders fail. It's not because they didn't spend enough time studying technical analysis. It's not because you know they didn't put enough time into learning how to trade. It's not because they're trading the wrong system. It's because they have a lack of planning. There's a lack of planning, not just in your exact strategy, not just in what's an entry, what's an exit, where's my stop loss, where are my rules for adjusting my stop loss, where's my take profit, what are my rules for managing my trade, not just that, the whole plan, right? The waking up at the same time every day or staying up till the same time every day to trade, the knowing what pairs to look for, the knowing where to get your news from. Are you following news? Are you ignoring news? Are you trading around events? Are you not trading around events? How much are you risking per trade? All of this. Everything is encompassed into your trading plan. And if you have anything missing, it could make or break your success as a trader, which is like extremely, extremely critical that people need to realize. You need to be extremely, extremely diligent, extremely detailed, extremely descriptive when you're developing your trading plan. I want this to take a long time. It's supposed to be and it should be something you never stop working on. I never stop adjusting my plan. I never stop tweaking my trading um, or my plan. And it'll change depending on different parts of my life. If I'm traveling, my trading plan is different than if I'm home. I'm out of my routine, I'm out of my system, I'm out of my workplace, I'm in a totally different environment and my trading routine changes, right? My plan changes. My risk management and my strategy to the actual trades don't, but everything else does. Maybe even my actual strategy changes in the sense that managing my trades If I'm traveling, maybe I don't have enough time to sit there and watch my trades. So I need to have another management style in place to let my trades ride when I'm not able to access them. Or maybe my plan calls to not trade when I'm in that kind of situation, right? So it has to constantly be evolving and it should take you an extremely long time to develop your trading plan. And for my students, it's one of the first lessons we go over, right? So if you look here at uh, our lessons, I'll just go back to my training. You can see the importance of a trading plan development and how much it's involved by, if you look at this, here's a course outline, right? And there's a number of lessons here, but the beginning is here. Welcome your tools, Forex 101, and then boom, right into trading plan development, right? That shows you right there, it's unit two. It's the second thing we cover. And then through the rest of the units, you're going to be building onto this, adding to your trading plan, and creating a trading plan. So that is that is the huge takeaway that people need to realize here is that your trading plan must be thorough and you must constantly be working on it. All right? And I have a little bit of trading plan outline here I want to go over with you guys. This is going to be our how to develop this, right? So this is in my course for all my students. Everybody who stays to the end of this webinar, I will be giving you this PDF for free to download right off of here. Um, but I will be honest with you guys. This Every single thing is not going to be on this little outline here. There are some things that I want you guys to understand to include in there that are custom to you and that aren't necessarily on here, right? So um, that is going to be things such as, you know, when you're traveling, what are you going to do? Um, If you have company over and your schedule is off, what are you going to do? If you change jobs and now your schedule is this. How are you going to implement that? All that kind of stuff that's like individual to each person. All right, so real quick here, your trading plan needs to be as detailed as possible. Take your time when making it, but it does not have to be perfect. The first version is simply a rough draft and will continue to change over time as you progress and learn what suits your personality and what does and doesn't work in the markets. Just make sure you tailor what tailor this to you and if it's your strengths and weaknesses. If you don't know what they are yet, that's fine. As you demo trade, back test, plan, and realize to discover them. Um, you just need to add, make sure you add them to your plan as you go. So this is something again that I'm big on in the course is, is you need to develop everything for you personally, right? No two traders can just pick something up, one trader that works with them and the other trader, um, it'll work with them. You know, that, it doesn't work that way. Everybody's human being mentality and, and psychological makeup is so different. There's no way you're just going to be able to pick up somebody else's plan and use it. That's why this has to be custom to you. If there was a way to make a plan that anybody could trade and make money off of, all these trading guru um, strategies that you buy online, 
I mean, they'd be billionaires. If you could just sell a strategy in here, it's going to make you endless money. Do exactly what I do and you could do it. Come on. So this is where you need to be personalized. You need to develop it around you, right? So I'll go through this outline with you guys real quick and go over the importance of each individual one so you guys can understand what is expected to be on it and why, right? So your goals, uh, obviously at the end of the day, what is the reason for you getting into trading, right? Why have you taken the time to learn this, this uh, skill? So that is what you want to lay out in here. You know, lay it out the reason you want to be a trader, what you expect to gain out of it. What are your goals personally? What are your goals financially? What are your goals professionally? Maybe you want to end up working for a bank one day. Maybe you want to be an analyst for a company. Maybe you just want to be able to trade your own personal account sitting on the beach with a pina colada the rest of your life. Put your, your exact reasoning to work here so that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and what you're striding towards to make all this hard work worth it, right? And then you can translate that into your trading goals, right? So your percentage of returns per month. What are your realistic trading goals that you want to accomplish to get to where you want to be with your personal goals, right? So don't say returns per month, don't say 150% per month. That's not realistic, right? 10% per month, 5% per month, 3% per month, 15% per month. That's a little bit high even, but those are gains that are realistic. Your win the loss percentage and, and you know, base it off per 50 trades, per 100 trades, per 10 trades, whatever it is. The more trades you have, the more accurate the percentage of with statistics like this. But your win the loss percentage, maybe, you know, off the bat, you just want to win half your trades. And if you're using a two to one risk to reward ratio, boom, you're a positive trader. But then as you trade and you go, you want to increase that winning percentage to maybe 60% and you tweak your strategy and you do this and you do that until you're seeing that you're getting closer to 60%. Or maybe you win 40% of your trades because every winner that you make is three, four, five, six, seven times bigger than your loser. So you're only winning three out of 10 trades, but they're all much bigger than your losers. So they're, they're big, they're, um, you're positive, you're making money, right? Your risk to reward ratios. So I recommend at least a two to one risk to reward ratio. Not at least. I don't really say much higher than that. Your first take profit, your take profit one, your initial shave some money off and put it aside should be one and a half to two to one risk to reward. But then you should have larger take profit goals that you try to get to ride those nice trades. Maybe you have a trailing stop with some sort of rules or maybe you just have a, a predetermined stop loss or take profit area. But you want to determine your risk to reward goals, your personal goals, you see. This is where you go over, you know, you want it to be an additional income on the side. Do you want it to be uh, a full-time job? Do you want it to be, you know, just one of your many streams of income? You want to identify your personal strengths and weaknesses and ad adapt your trading plan to them. You might develop a trading plan all around scalping. You trade and demo and back test for a month and you realize you do not have what it takes to be a scalper. You need to use your patience as your, to your advantage. You're a very patient person, right? Use it to your advantage. Swing trade. Position trade, do something where you can let it ride and you're not so anxious having to be in and out, in and out, in and out, losing money or making money that fast, right? So this is where you need to adapt it and fit it to you and how you're going to conquer your strengths and weaknesses. Maybe you, um, you are a swing trader and though you are very patient, you have a weakness of, you know, um, getting bored when you're watching your trades and closing out because you were bored or scared or fearful. Then maybe you have in your trading plan, you know, once you're in, if you set it and forget it, right? Maybe you enter your trade and you have a predetermined stop loss and take profit. Uh, maybe you set a rule in your trading plan. You're, you're not, you can only check the charts every four hours or um, you can't check the charts until the next day or whatever to get yourself away from the charts, away from that weakness that gets you bored and gets you to exit your trades or add more to them or whatever you see that you're doing wrong, your, your weakness. Put something in your trading plan to, to stop you from doing that. I, I know traders that, you know, would make a lot of money early in the morning trading and then they'd give it back when they kept trading the rest of the day because the markets were illiquid and they, you know, the, the opportunities weren't there and they would give the money back. They realized, okay, if I stopped trading after the morning session, held on to my profits and didn't trade after that, I'd make so much more money. So they went and got a gym membership or they went and picked up a hobby. They started surfing. They started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They did something to get them away from the charts and away from that need to over trade and give your money back and get out and do something, get you away from the charts. So that's, that's one of the very important things to, um, you know, 
build into your plan to try to work on your strengths and weaknesses. So the necessary items when it comes to your actual trading, your actual strategy of trading, you need to have your duration. Are you a position trader, swing trader, intraday, um, scalper on the minute charts, whatever that is. You have to predetermine your time frame. I, I require, I tell my students and re recommend three time frames. So you have your, your um, entry time frame, you have your intermediate, and you have your major time frame. Uh, typically you follow the trend in the major time frame and then you enter on the, the entry time frame. So three time frames. Determine them around the kind of trader you are. If you are a position trader, you don't want to be looking at the maybe the hourly at the absolute lowest, but you don't want to be looking at a 15 minute chart or a 30 minute chart if you're a position trader. If you're an intraday trader, maybe the monthly chart means nothing to you and it won't affect you. This is where you determine what kind of trader you're going to be and then the time frame. And then the style, right? Are you going to trade pullbacks? Are you going to trade breakouts? Are you going to trade reversals? Are you going to trade um, you know, range bound markets? What are you going to trade? What style are you going to trade? Maybe you only short trades and you never go long and you're only trading this pair. There's a million different ways that people have come up with to make money in the markets, but this is where we develop that plan and we figure out what we're going to be doing, right? So um, your style is within this section. Then you have your daily routine, massively important to me. I am the biggest advocate you'll ever meet with having a structure to your life. I don't care if you don't even trade. I don't care what you do for a living. If you have structure in your daily routine, you will be so much more productive. And one of the biggest things that I tell people, I just had a big uh, YouTube video about this, um, is to have a plan every day. So your daily routine to me starts with planning out your day and everything you want to do and get accomplished. Um, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., I'm going to be trading. From 9 to 11, I'm going to the gym. From 11 to 6, I'm working my job. From 6 to 9, I'm analyzing the charts for tomorrow, getting ready for my setups. From 9 to 12, I'm working on my license for whatever that I'm working on. You know, lay out every day and what you want to get done. Your major goals for that day you want to get done, and I promise you you will start to be so much more effective as a person. Trading is 1,000% in line with that, right? So when are you gonna be analyzing the charts? When are you gonna be looking to trade? Trading the specific times are so important in anything, but especially Forex. It's a 24 hour a day, five day a week market that trades round the clock. If you just look for setups at any time, you're leaving so much unnecessary time to make impulsive trades. Not having a structure, leaves too much room for impulse. Impulse is one of the number one killers of traders. You just pick up a chart, look at it. Oh, this looks like a good setup. Short, ding, up, oh, it stops you out. That wasn't my plan. What am I doing? Why am I trading that? Stick to set hours. Uh, if you're in Europe, the UK, London Open is an unbelievable time to trade and look for setups of any kind, right? That's where you have momentum, you have liquidity, you have high movement. So maybe you wanna trade in a few hours there. Maybe you wanna trade the US Open. That's where your time frames fits your schedule and you want to trade that time frame there. Maybe you want to trade the Asian session and stick to the pairs that move more in that session, the Japanese Yen, New Zealand, Aussie. You know, maybe you want to do that. There's a number of different ways you can work your your time you trade, but you definitely need to, for a fact, have to have a set time every single day when you're looking to trade and put time aside where you're looking to analyze and not take trades, right? When you check the news, where do you check it? Do you use Forex Factory like I do? Do you check it once a week and note it all down on your you know, calendar or your whiteboard so you know when the events are? Or maybe you have to check every day right when you get started in your trading session because you need to know, okay, if I trade this pair and it's 9 a.m., I have this news event I gotta look out for. So maybe I wanna close it before then. Or maybe you like trading news events and you'll look for the news events that are high rated news for the week and that's when you wanna be behind your charts trading. Number of different ways to spin that up. Your news has to be in there. When and how are you checking it? One, we mark up the charts, refresh your analysis. So uh, maybe every day you're going through all 28 pairs. Maybe you only watch three pairs and you're trading and uh, redoing the charts multiple times a day. Maybe you know you mark your weekly and daily major levels once a month or once a week or once a day. That is where you need to build into your plan. How often will you be doing this analysis and what will you be doing? Um, have a set time for everything, especially when you'll be behind the charts looking for trades and when you won't be. Have set times where you do not want to trade no matter what, news events. Um, Maybe it's the Asian session. Maybe it's five o'clock Eastern time when the market resets for the day and spreads go out of control on your broker. I know you've all seen that before. I'm sure a lot of you have been in trades before they get stopped out and you look back and you don't even think that the price even went near your stop loss. 
that's something you want to look out for. Maybe you don't want to trade around then. I'll never open a trade, no matter how nice it looks, around 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. Just won't do it. Even before that, 3 to 5 Eastern time, unless I'm holding it for a long period of time and i got a wide stop, out. I'm not looking for trades around that. So that's something that's got to be in there. Now, your pair selection. Again, maybe you trade one pair. Maybe you trade five pairs. Maybe you pay, trade just the U.S. dollar crosses. Maybe you trade all 28 like I do, and you, ro you rotate your checklist. Um, how will you do your market analysis? How do you determine which charts you'll trade? So maybe you, you picked a few that maybe you, you, know, you like trading the London Open, so you're trading the pound, euro, and the dollar. Or uh, maybe you're trading the euro session, the Asian session again, and you're trading those pairs. Um, maybe like me, I, my charts that I'm trading constantly change because I follow the trend. And I follow a specific setup. So um, if I don't have a trending pair making higher highs and higher lows that just recently made a new higher high or higher low or a lower low on the daily chart, that strategy, I'm not looking to trade that. So I'll go through every day. I'll update my watch list, which char charts are reflecting what I'm looking for. And the rest of the charts, see you later. I don't have a reason to look at you right now because there's no setup that I'm looking for. And then every day I'll refresh that to see if there's one that has now entered my criteria. Or I'll have a flag that I'll give a pair, right? I'll flag it. If it's on my watch list, it's red. It's there. I'm watching it. If it's close to my being on my watch list but didn't trigger that new you know, break of structure yet, um, then maybe I'll give it an orange flag because it's close but not there yet. And I'll keep an eye on it. But um, you need to include how you determine the chart you'll trade. And uh, will you trade around news events or will you not, like I said already? Um, what is your setup? Are you trading in the direction of the trend? Are you counter trend? Are you, um, you know, pullbacks or breakouts? You need to specify as detailed as humanly possible in these sections. Your trading strategy. Although I told you guys not any two people trade the same and could pick up the same plan and do it, you need to develop a trading plan that's as detailed enough that somebody strange to you and your strategy can pick it up and know exactly what to do to follow it, right? That's how detailed you should be. Not that their emotions or their strategy is gonna, their, their willpower or mindset is gonna be able to follow it, but they should be able to pick it up and know exactly how to the way you want it to be followed, right? Um, your technical rules. So what exactly specifies the setup you're taking? One of the biggest things that I tell traders that really, really ultimately leads to the demise and downfall of so many traders is you need to have not just a plan of action for all this stuff, but a plan of action that's your strategy, that you do the same thing every time, over and over and over and over and over again. The only way to con create consistency in your profits and your success is to follow something consistently that is accurate, that is similar, that's the same every time you place a trade. So you need to get these technical rules on paper, you need to know exactly what you're looking for when you get behind the charts, and you need to develop a strategy that reflects that. Right? And you need to follow it every time. It makes trading easy. It makes trading mindless. You, you might lose that excitement of just randomly clicking a button to trade something and seeing what happens. But open a $50 demo or a $50 uh, account with some shitty overseas broker that gives you 4000 to one leverage and mess around with it on there if you need to get that impulse out of you. But your actual account, your, your, your real money is at that you don't want to risk, don't do that shit. You need an exact strategy. You need an exact plan in place. I need to follow it. It needs to be detailed. And this will change. You know, As you demo and as you journal, you'll realize aspects of this you do like, you don't like, that do work, that don't work, and you'll tweak it. And that's another big part of this strategy that's not in this little layout here, but you need to have built in here what you're journaling, what you're keeping track of, so that you know when you're going back what to look for to see what adjustments to make. The market constantly changes. And... Your strategy, you want to constantly change to improve. So to be able to do that, you're going to need to go back and reflect on your trading and see what's working, what's not, and what the market's doing and what it's not doing. Right? You even want to be taking notes of what the market behaved like that day even. And then you'll be able to get an idea of what it's been acting like lately as a whole and things like that. You want to set up your checklist. All right? There's another thing that I have in the plan that I go over with them, but a checklist is going to be a very small, simplified version of your trading strategy that you can look at and in five seconds go, okay, that's happening. Okay, that's happening. Okay, that's happening. Okay, that's happening. Here's my trigger. Okay, if this happens, I'm in the trade, right? So uh, it's in an uptrend. It's setting new higher highs, higher lows, prices above the 20 and 50 SMA. Check, we have a trend. Um, price just broke a new resistance within an uptrend. Check. 
Price pulled back for two days after that resistance and now found support. Check. It's on a 50% Fibonacci level. Check. Now my candlestick reversal pattern is the trigger I'm looking for. So when I check that off, I can enter a trade. But I can't enter a trade until all these checks are here. And you go through that checklist and that's when you realize, oh, you know what? Um, it's in an uptrend recently and set new higher highs and higher lows, but it's still below the moving averages. So it's not really an uptrend yet. It's just a deep pullback and a downtrend or the, the trend just hasn't fully gone into an uptrend yet. And that's when you see a check missing. And you're like, okay, I'm not taking this trade. So checklist is massive. It's a small little quick go-to reference of your trading strategy. And um, it has to be used every time you make a trade. If you've been doing this for a long time and you you know that checklist by heart and you don't have to physically check it anymore, okay, maybe you can stop doing it. But I don't recommend that. I recommend you use it as long as you can. It keeps you focused. You're set. You're stop entry and target, right? You're, you're going to have to predetermine in your trading plan exactly where your stop loss is going to be. And it, I'm not saying it's going to be the same place every setup. Maybe you have a 20 pip stop loss. Maybe you've testing a strategy or you want to try testing a strategy. That's a 20 pip stop loss, 40 pip target with every trade you take. Maybe that's what you want to test and see how it performs. Um, or maybe you, you use fundamental, I mean, a technical analysis for it. Maybe it's the prior swing high or swing low that you use to put your stop below. Maybe if it's a breakout and you're trading patterns, you do you do your stop outside the pattern. Uh, whatever it may be, you have to determine it. Your entry, again, that trigger, what gets you into the trade? What needs to happen to tell you this is getting me in? Time to click the buy or sell button. Your target. So where are you putting your take profit before you enter the trade? You don't want to be determining any of these once you enter a trade. Once you enter a trade, all bets are off. Your emotions have now taken over because you have money on the line and we are human beings, inevitably, greed, power, uh, fear, it's all going to take over. And once you enter a trade, if you haven't predetermined your stop and target, it's going to be different. And I guarantee you, if you could do a study where you entered 100 trades without a predetermined stop loss, and then once you were in the trade, you had to set it. And then you entered 100 of the same trades, but you determined the stop loss before you entered it, the two set up, the two results would look massively different. And that's because of your mindset and your emotions of how much they really do change when you're live in a trade. Right? So you need to include your stop entry and target beforehand. Your risk management, will you be actively or passively managing a trade? Simple breakdown of that, passive management is a set it and forget it, right? You determine your stop loss and your target before you enter a trade. When you enter it, you have your stop loss and your target orders in place and you leave it alone, let it ride. This is good for people with busy schedules that work full time, that have a lot of you know stuff going on in their life where they can actively check the charts. This is a great way to be able to trade and check the charts um, without having to spend too much time sitting behind them. Identify what will make you choose active or passive. So maybe you are passively trading when you enter a trade overnight because you'll be sleeping. You won't be able to check the charts. Or maybe when you go in into work, you passively enter a trade. But if you're sitting behind your computer or you have off or it's nighttime when you trade X strategy or whatever, um, maybe then you have an active management style. And an active style is going to be when you are actively doing something. You're trailing your stop. Maybe, I mean, there's trailing stops that are passive in the sense that you can set a 20 pip trailing stop and as the price moves, it'll follow it, right? You're actively following the price. So I consider that active management, but it's just a tool to make it easier on you where you don't have to drag it. Uh, maybe you use the 20 moving average, 20 period moving average as your stop loss and you're actively trailing it up with the moving average. Maybe you use parabolic SAR or you use market structure. There you're going to be actively managing it and actively moving your stop while price is moving. So you have to determine which way you're going to do it. Maybe you're using both. That's fine. But you have to determine it. Your position management. So this goes back to your risk management, right? Your overall position management overview. So what are you going to be doing um, to manage this position? How is this active or passive management going to be done, right? Um, how are you determining your position size? How are you determining uh, everything that you want to do with the management of your trade? And um, maybe, you know, you have a a strategy you've been using for a long time that you know is consistently profitable and you risk three, four percent per trade. But then you have a riskier strategy you've been testing lately that you don't know for sure yet how good the results are and you only want to risk one percent of your trade on that strategy. This is where you lay that out, right? This is where you lay out all your rules for your take profit. This is where you lay out all your rules for your stop loss, which ultimately should only be this is where my stop is and this is where it's staying until it either gets hit or I take my profits off the table. That's what it should be. You can have a break-even strategy where you adjust it to break-even after a certain amount of move in your favor. I, I don't really encourage those, but that could be there. Um, but this is where you lay all that out. And then your position sizing is where you set your overall count risk exposure. So that's where you have, um, you know, you have your individual 
risk, say you want to risk 2% per trade, but then you should have an overall account exposure. So if you're risking 2% per trade, okay, that's good. You'll never risk more than 2% of the time. But if you take 10 trades at once, you're missing 20%, you're risking 20% of your trade. You don't want to do that, right? So this is where you determine um, just how much risk you'll be you'll be um, using for your account in general. So how many trades can be open at once with X amount of percentage risk per trade. So this is where you determine the most your risk per trade. This is where you set your losses per day, week, month before you um, go back to demo and analyze what's wrong. So basically if you, if you are getting crushed in your strategy and you're going below 15, 20% drawdown in your account, you wanna take a breather, put your live account aside for a minute, get in your demo account and figure out what's going on. Right? And this is where you wanna set your rules to determine that. So maybe you have two losses per day and that's it. You trade between seven and 9 a.m. If you take two trades and you lose them both, you're done for the day. If you take one trade, you lose it, you win one, you can keep going, you didn't have your two losses. Maybe you have a, a win limit too. Maybe if you win two trades that day, you're done for the day. You're taking your profits, you don't wanna give it back. Uh, maybe you trade three times per day. Maybe you just take one trade a day. If it wins, it wins. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Whatever that may be, that's where you determine it. And then what will you use to calculate your position size? I recommend using position size calculator. You can just Google it and it'll come right up. It's on my FX book website. All you have to do is Google position size calculator. It'll come up. It'll show you exactly what you need to plug in and you can keep your risk percentage every single trade at the same level. And that's done with your position size calculator. Right, so um, that needs to be in your trading plan. Everything here needs to be in your trading plan. Then you also need to have in your trading plan, you know, your um, journaling. What's going to be in your journal? How often are you going to be doing it? How often are you going over it? How often are you analyzing what you're doing? Um, and, and that's where you're really going to start to build everything full circle, right? That's when you're really going to start to get everything coming around full circle. So that takes us into the next section is implementing and developing your trading plan. So first you want to just build it as you go, right? For, for people who take my course, the big recommendation I have and the reason we do it in the way that we do is I teach you the trading plan first and anybody, even people that aren't part of my course can do this. Teach you the trading plan first. You figure out your trading plan, right? You, you, you print out the outline, you take notes on it, you write down whatever you want and then you know, okay, as I'm going forward and learning all these different tools, learning all these technical analysts, technical analytics, how to read the charts, what sessions I like, what sessions I don't like, what pairs I like, what pairs I don't like. You're adding to your built trading plan and it starts to get built, right? First you pour the concrete, you get the outline down, you get the kind of trader you wanna be, what your goals are, and then you start building the frame, right? Then you start putting up the walls and you start putting in the electric and you start putting in the plumbing, you know, you, you start building everything. That's what you need to do. So you get this trading plan down and then as you start learning about your journal, your risk management, your routine, your edge, your goals, psychology, then you go into, you know, all your technical analysis tools, the different trading styles. You go into exact strategies here, preparing for battle, fundamentals. So that's where you know um, we start with the trading plan and you dive into everything and you put it together like you're building a house, like you're building with Legos, like you're doing anything. You build it piece by piece by piece by piece. Now, as you're implementing that and building that, you'll see what works, what doesn't work, and you'll find what fits for you, what doesn't fit for you, for your schedule, for your lifestyle, for everything. And then as you continue to trade, you journal what you're doing. You journal what's working, what's not working. You journal how you feel emotionally with your trades. You journal what the outcome are of the trades, what's happened, win, lose, how quickly. Um, maybe you start to realize my stop losses are just barely getting hit and then price is going in my direction. So that's something you wanna note in your journal. And if you realize it's happening X amount of times, your stop loss is too tight. And then you implement your trading plan. Maybe you realize um, waking up this early every day and trading this session, I'm not as focused as I am around noon. Once I've gotten the day going a little bit, I got to go to the gym, I got to eat some food, now I'm focused, now I wanna go trade. You know, maybe you realize that. That's when you implement your strategy and you adapt it and you fit it to your life. Maybe you, um, you know, uh, anything. Maybe you realize that uh, you don't like trading pullbacks. Pullbacks just something about waiting for price to come in the opposite direction to then go long or short in the direction it went before the pullback. Maybe you just don't like it. You want to trade breakouts. You love chart patterns. You love finding them. You love drawing them. You love the art behind it. You like identifying them and you like, you know, trading them. So maybe you want to trade chart patterns. 
And after you trade for a little while and develop your plan, you're going to realize that. If I could show you guys the amount of changes that have occurred in my trading plan from when I got serious with trading and started using one, Maverick Trading, the first proprietary trading firm I ever worked with back in 2013, something like that, 12, 13, something like that. Um, the first thing they made me do is this, create a trading plan outline. And I think my first one was like 25 pages, 26 pages long. And it took me a year to make maybe. And the amount of changes that have occurred to that since now is mind blowing. It's nothing at all even remotely close to like that one was. Everything's changed on it and that's fine. I've discovered myself. I've discovered what works and what doesn't work for me personally. What my strengths and weaknesses are and how I can use that in trading. I've learned, you know, well, I've tried the Asian session, I've tried the London session, I've tried the US session, I've tried all three at once, I've tried just news events, I've tried them all, and I've slowly but surely tweaked and adapted and adjusted, and I continue to adjust it. Just last year, the end of the year, I had an awesome strategy that was on breakout strategy. It was working awesome, it was killer from like November, I mean from like October to the end of December of this past 2018. It was killing it. January, February, it got crushed. That that strategy, I have multiple strategies, that strategy got crushed. So, I scrapped it. I've got it on the side, I'll continue testing it, and when it starts working again, I'll bring it back to the live trading book. But, it, it didn't work, and I implemented my trading plan because it stopped working. The markets are an animal. The markets change whenever the hell they want. They do whatever the hell they want. They don't give a shit what you have to say about it. So, if you're not staying on top of what you're doing and how to continue to change and evolve with the markets... You'll get left behind. You'll have a strategy that works unbelievable and then all of a sudden it's shit and you'll keep following it and you'll lose and lose and lose. You'll not know why. You'll hate it. You'll quit. You'll leave. You'll stop trading. You'll never come back. When if you just simply, you know, adjusted it or tried something else or tried to figure out what the market was trading, maybe, you know, we've been stuck in a range for a long time. So maybe your breakout trend following strategy is not working. You want to find a support resistance range balance strategy, test it, work it. Whatever it may be, you need to be adaptive. You need to stay ready to change and actively trying to do that. Right, And the biggest way he's going to be doing that is going to be analyzing your journal and sticking to your trading plan to have that consistency and be able to go back and look and be like, oh, well, this is going on, so maybe I should stop doing it or maybe I should do this more because it looks like this is working. And that's where you really, really, really build everything together and implement it. And your journal is going to help you with your implementing of your actual trading strategy massively. You'll realize... You know, your take profits are too far because price isn't hitting them. They're going in your direction. You, you see you're in the money, yay. And then it, before your take profit gets hit, it goes against you and stops you out. And you'll see out of the last 10 trades you made, four of them uh, would have been take profits if your take profit wasn't so far away. And, you know, you would have made 10% that month instead of losing 10% that month. So these are the things that you need to constantly be doing and adapting and changing and adding and following and analyzing. And if you're... Another thing of advice that I've told people before, and it's okay. You might realize getting into trading and doing all this, it's not for you. You know, you might realize it's too analytical. You're, you're, not, you're a people person. You, you can't sit there and analyze charts and, and paperwork and journals for three hours a day. Um, it's, just, it's just not you. Great. Move on. Stop wasting your time. Don't waste any more of your money. Go find something that's you. And that's okay. That's life. That's what we're here to do is find our purpose, find what works for us, find what makes us happy and run with it. So you, you're going to figure out what does and doesn't make you happy as you develop your trading plan and hopefully you'll be able to focus on what does. So um, another thing here, guys, this is anybody that hasn't gotten it yet. This is my free swing trading strategy. I'll throw the link in here for you guys. But basically, this is just a sample of pretty much that checklist, right? That checklist I told you guys about. Um that I go over before I enter a trade, what needs to be there. Um, this trading strategy, there's a PDF to download it so that you have the PDF form. And then there's a full video that takes you uh, in detail through the whole style, the whole strategy, so you guys can see um, how I follow it and how I execute it. It's a nice swing trading strategy. So that's, that's one thing you guys can check out there to help complement this video. Maybe if you're struggling to develop a trading strategy, you can use that to help you out. Um, but also, don't forget to, you know, if you're not already a member, check out the course here. Check the course out and see if, you know, maybe it's something you're interested in. We also share our trade signals. So um, the course is not only educational content. It's over 50 hours of video, 40 lessons. Um, it's not just that. It's also 
uh, signal room where we share our trades. Um, I will open this handout now for you guys for this trading plan outline. You guys can take it and use it. Um, hopefully that just got shared with you guys. Let me know if it didn't. Yeah, it shows that it's shared. Um, but that should give you guys that outline that I just went over with you and you should be able to use that to start developing a plan. And feel free to send it over to me, guys. I, I love checking out people's trading plans, helping them out with it. You guys will see. It's not just my students. Uh, my students know that I love checking out their strategies and sharing them back feedback. But, um, you know, you guys are also welcome to send it over to me. I mean, it's going to be a little bit tougher without you going through my course to see what my different aspects are of it. But I would love to check out your feedback, check out your uh, strategy and give you whatever feedback I have on it. I'll throw my email in here too if any of you guys want to do that. But um, yeah, if you guys want to throw me feedback, if you want to start tr developing a trading plan and shoot it over to me and be like, hey, am I missing anything? Do I need to be more detailed in this aspect? Do I need to you know, cover more of this aspect? Or how does my routine look? You know, uh, That's where you guys can shoot it over to me and I'll check it out. But um, that pretty much covers, I know I could go on forever about this topic. I really could. It's, it's by far the most important thing you'll ever come across in trading and in life. You know, if you ever start your own business, I, I own my, a couple of my own businesses. And if, if I could take anything that translates to, directly between the two, it's having a plan and a strategy is crucial to both. Absolutely 150% essential. Um, and that's true with a lot of things in life. If you're an athlete, you know, if you're trying to make a draft, if you're trying to make it to college, if you're trying to do whatever, get a scholarship. Um, if you have a plan of how you're going to get to that end goal and you break it into micro goals and that plan gets followed, chances are you're going to hit your goal. That's why people say what you put yourself to, you know, you can always get. You can get anything you apply yourself to. That comes to planning. So you need to plan with your trading. Um, anybody have any questions at all relating to it? You guys want me to cover anything else quickly here? Does want to go over any pairs, um, anything like that? Please feel free to share it with me now here. I really do appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day. Um, you know, it's a Monday afternoon here in the U.S. Crappy weather, so I guess for Nick, it wasn't too bad to hang out in here and get out of the rain for a little bit and have something to do. But appreciate you guys tuning in either way. I do these. Um, once a month on different topics. If you guys know what you want me to cover next month, I can see if it's something I didn't do yet, if it's something I could do for you guys. Always open to new topics. I love getting feedback from you guys on what to do. If you guys want to make a YouTube video on anything in particular, I just made a really, really good video, that I think, um, yesterday that you guys should definitely check out uh, going overall. Basically, just the importance of what makes a good trader um, and what is the important things to focus on in trading. Um, but yeah, other than that guys, yeah, Nick, it was great timing. Um, and we didn't get much thunder here, so didn't have to interrupt the video too much, which is awesome. But, um, let's